All right, are you ready to do the painting? Yeah, well, can you take over and do it? I don't want to. channel everybody my name is Garmin this is the Storycraft Society and over the last few weeks we have been working on this awesome holy site shrine for my D&D game a lot of things have happened from the like crafting of it to putting it all together last week we put together all of the ground texture which looked absolutely great and now we are ready to move on to painting the one thing that I did to get this video started off was I put black magic craft base coat over the whole thing that is just a 50 50 mixture of magic acrylic craft paint and black mod that wasn't right matte mod podge and black acrylic craft paint 50 50 mixture that strengthens up the foam as well as gives us our base coat but now it's time to move on to painting this thing up I'm really excited this is where it's gonna all come to life but I also hate painting so it's a little bit of a grab bag let's dive into how I'm gonna get this thing painted up let's go now, to get this thing painted, I wanted to try something a little different with the rock texture. Now, when I say a little different, I mean a little different. A lot of times with foam, what I'll do is I'll just use three tones of gray to paint my rocks up, and that works just fine. It does a good job. And almost always when I do plaster rocks, I will end up doing a leopard spotting technique where you take and use a bunch of different colors to kind of spot the rocks and then go over them with a medium gray. I think I'm gonna try that today, but instead of with plaster, I'm gonna see how it works on foam. This might work great, it might work terrible, I don't know, but that's half the fun of it. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get all of these rocks painted out in white. So I painted all of my rock texture. I just used a basic matte apple barrel white watered it down so that it went on easily enough and it got me actually a little bit of color variation, which is nice, but that's just the base coat. Now what we need to do is start putting on the color. This is gonna be the paintball match that's going to end up coloring this thing up like crazy. The three colors that I picked are turquoise, lime tree, and deep coral. And honestly, I just picked those three colors, not for any reason other than the fact that they are bright and they will stand out once I get all of the other stuff that will go on top of these. So let's dive into how to do those. So I'm gonna start out with this turquoise and what I'm gonna do is put a little bit in to cup here and then I'm gonna water this way, way down. Like way down. Stir that up. And what you can see is that it's way more water than paint. This is the goal. This is what we want. Now, the reason that this is called leopard spotting is because what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're just going to start splashing it like leopard spots all over the foam. And you don't have to do this super like tactfully. You can just slap it on there. The key that I like to stick to with this is about a quarter of the space needs to have each color. In this example, I'm trying to cover up about a quarter of this. My next color will take up a quarter. My final color will take up a quarter. And then the last color will just be the natural white that's already on there. Now that I got the blue splashed all over there, I'm going to move on to the lime tree. And now I'm going to pick new places. And they overlap a little bit. That's okay. Running is actually okay. It ends up looking really cool in the end product for sure. But that's the idea for the lime. Moving on to our last color here. This is going to be the coral. And now we've really got like paintball match. You know, somebody's a really bad shot with a paintball gun feel and vibe going on here. Or like 80s party or something. <laughs> As we get this final color on, then I will check back in when all of this is done. While I let the leopard spotting dry, I am going to just go over one quick little thing that I realized in doing this that I wasn't expecting, that I probably should have been expecting. I'm so used to the leopard spotting soaking into the plaster when I do plaster rocks for obvious reasons, because it's plaster, it's absorbent, it soaks all of that color in. The foam, particularly the foam sealed up 
with Mod Podge will not absorb anything. So it was very interesting to deal with the fact that, yeah, the paint did stick, but it did not saturate in. And more importantly, it was a lot quicker to run which I think actually is gonna end up looking really cool by the time we get to the end of this thing. But for right now, all we can do is just let it sit like this until it dries. And then once it does, then we can move on to the next step. All right, so here is what we have. And it looks like an absolute mess right now. There is, I mean, basically nothing good about this as it looks right now, other than the fact that it will look awesome by the time we're done. So with this said, the next step is going to be pulling out our black wash. Now this is just one that I made using a black acrylic craft paint mixed with a very small amount of dish detergent and water. The dish detergent just works as a flow aid to make it fall down into the crevices and cracks. This is now gonna go over the whole thing. I shouldn't say over the whole thing, over all of the rocks. Now it's the next morning and I have waited for all of the black wash to dry. That should be it for the sloppy work, you know, the work where everything is kind of spilling out over everything else. I, I hope that that's the case. The next thing that we need to do is get the stone all painted up. So what I'm gonna do is pull out a pewter gray, I'm gonna pull out an elephant gray, and then I'm going to also pull out a khaki. I'm going to do a wet brushing over top of the whole thing with the pewter gray. I'm going to do a dry brushing over the top with the elephant gray, and then I'm gonna do my highlights with a khaki. That's next. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this is gonna be the step where all of this like ridiculous splotchy colorness goes away. Obviously, the black wash definitely brought a lot of the bah in your face down, but it's still kind of ridiculous looking. This is gonna be the step that neutralizes all that. Time for a little check in slash recap slash explanation of a pivot I'm getting ready to make. So the first thing that happened is I put on the pewter gray that's up here in this top row, you can see that it mutes down the colors and it starts to look gray with undertones of color as opposed to just, you know, dark colors. The next step that I did was elephant gray and that's the highlights that you see in this row here. You can see that now it starts to basically just read as gray and then there's like little bits of yellow there and little bits of orange there. It really starts to pull the eye away from the color and the color just becomes interesting undertones underneath instead of, you know, colors on top. Now, the final plan was to do a dry brushing over the top of khaki. And that's what I did in this little section right here, but you can see pretty quickly that it takes this rock look away and immediately starts to make it kind of look sandy and dirty. I didn't want that. So I'm going to pivot and now I'm gonna do a dry brush over the top in just white. I'm gonna to try to be kind of light with this and really just focus on going high to low so that it looks like sun hitting the edges of the rocks and hopefully that will do the job. Once I got everything all done, here's where we ended up. At this stage, I always think that I overdid the highlights and it went too bright, particularly on camera. In my room, it looks a lot more subdued and a lot nicer. I mean, also I have the big, you know, studio lights that are lighting everything up. So that also makes the highlights look a lot more aggressive. With that said, I know just from experience that as soon as we start painting the dirt texture and bringing that up in color, these won't look so bright. They look super white compared to black, but once this is brown, it will be fine. So that's gonna be the next step. I'm not doing anything special with the ground texture, so I think I'm gonna just kind of fast forward through that. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. All right, we're back for another episode of Garmin's Real Talks. It has been like four and a half days, and it's just been awful to try to get myself to finish painting this thing. I have said on the channel a whole bunch of times that painting is like one of my least favorite things to do. I really love the construction part of it. In fact, that just gets me super excited and really hyped up every time I do it. Doing the painting just always ends up feeling like a chore and a slug. So with that said, this is where I got to and this is where I'm gonna have to end this episode just because of time constraints for getting an episode out this week. 
but we got the ground texture all painted. So you can see that there's like the tan path that runs up through the whole thing. We got the little altar painted. That actually turned out really great. I used kind of similar colors. I tried to do those just a little different to keep them standing out more. And obviously the gold accents look awesome. The one thing that I will say with this all painted up now is that this is my favorite foam rock texture that I think I have ever done. Like there's some kind of like sort of questionable areas, but I'll give you an example. This is what my normal rock texture color with foam usually ends up looking like. And it's very, very, very flat. It does have depth to it. Just the carving is not that, that great. It is certainly functional and it looks good on the table, but this just is so much more vibrant and there's so much more going on. So anyway, with that said, that's gonna be it for this week's video. Next week, I can very confidently say we are gonna get this thing finished up. If you can, do all of the YouTube stuff. Everyone who does that, I appreciate so much. But uh, like I said, that's it for this week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you.